Hello, this is Dr. David A. Gatros, Department of Computer Science at Florida State University, and I'd like to welcome you to my undergraduate lecture series on selected topics in computer science. You can find these videos and others at my YouTube channel at the URL listed below, or you can simply go to YouTube and search using Gatros and FSU as keywords. Now on to the lecture. What we're going to do now is give you a brief overview of the QT SPIM or um, MIPS assembly language uh, assembler that we're going to use for this class. There are several out there, but this is the one we'll use uh, primarily. It's, a, it's an emulator, uh, which means that it doesn't actually run on the architecture of the machine itself. It emulates the uh, RISC architecture. So uh, go over these slides before you actually attempt to do anything. Now, QT SPIM emulator does not have an editor. It's rather primitive, and I'll tell you right now, you're probably not going to like it very much, and that's okay. Most of you will probably never write assembly language programs anyway. Uh, you want to write the program using some type of editor. Um, I actually use a Unix editor a lot of times, uh, Pico or uh, uh, Vim or Emacs. Uh, Notepad uh, works also as well as WordPad. The point is that it must produce plain ASCII text. Let me repeat that. It must produce plain ASCII text. You can actually do it in Word, Microsoft Word, although I wouldn't recommend it. You want to save the program with a .s extension uh, so the assembler recognizes it. And to start going over the language, uh, each line of code usually has four areas. And I say usually because it's not always. Uh, it can have a label, one label, uh, which is uh, optional in some cases, some cases it's not. Uh, a line can also be a comment. Uh, if the whole line is a comment, then nothing else is on it. Uh, if it's an operation, then it usually has an operation. Uh, uh, some operations uh, will have an operand also. And you can also include comments after the operations. They can't come before, they have to come after. That is because when you use the um, symbol for comments, everything from that point to the end of the line is a uh, comment. So let's look at the emulator itself. This is the screenshot of uh, what it looks like when you bring up the emulator itself. Uh, I took this screenshot from, um, uh, from the version that I have. and um, uh, What you see here is you see the QT SPIM emulator and there are several windows which you can change but this is the default setting and this is usually what you want over on the left hand side right here you see the register visualization it shows you the contents of the registers uh, uh, during or after execution over to the right here you have the program code that it's actually executing and down to the bottom right here you have messages which uh, uh, usually where you get uh, syntax errors or if you got a runtime message uh, you get them there also you also have a, a console, and I'll bring the console over here and show you what it is. Whenever you get results, the uh, results show up in a console. And on a subsequent video, I'll actually go over running QT SPIM and running a, a sample program. And it's, uh, you want to you want to read uh, uh, go over that video next. Okay, some things to remember. Okay. Um, when you load in a program, uh, you have several options uh, at the top, and we're going over the top hand uh, side, the file. Uh, you can load a file, and if this is the first time you do it, that that's fine. However, uh, you want to be very careful, of it, but if you have to run the program again, and you load the file, if you choose file, it'll add to your existing file, and it gives you an error when you do that. What you want to do most of the time, and you can do it every time, is you want to do reinitialize and load file. And this is normally what you want to do because it clears out the previous entry and starts over again. The simulator setting uh, allows you to clear the registers and run and continue. Again, what you normally want to do. You can pause the simulation, especially if you've got a very long simulation or a long uh, run and you want to stop it. Uh, you can actually stop and halt the execution, or you can actually single step through each command. And this is very handy to do when you're trying to debug it. You can also uh, change the register displays to display in hex, decimal, or binary. Now, this is, uh, uh, again, when you're loading a file, reinitialize and load. That's normally what you want to do. That runs the program, and then that, that also uh, assembles it when you bring it in. So it checks the syntax of your program. 
here is executing the program it shows you which uh, line of code you're actually on if you're stepping step by step this is very handy to do if you're not doing step by step it'll just run through the entire program very very quickly this is the program data and again it's another window you can bring up to show uh, what the uh, the program would look like in memory and you can see the program data at the top of the uh, uh, this uh, up above the uh, user stack um, the value is that's actually a, a string declaration in the program that we've got as a sample on here and I, I understand a lot of this doesn't make sense right now but it will once you actually start using the um, assembly language itself it's uh, it's fairly straightforward one thing I like about assembly language is that uh, it is very simple the complexity is in the primitive nature of it but it is a very simple thing to learn at um, but uh, trying to write a complex program can be quite time consuming you can also set a breakpoint in it in other words you can set a breakpoint in a line of code and the execution will stop right there and allow you to look at the contents of the data and then uh, you can say okay continue on and go to the next breakpoint or continue processing and then uh, you can run the program uh, step by step and that's usually F10 on your computer and uh, keep in mind that this, uh, this is QT Spin works both on a Mac or a PC uh, either one. Uh, to download the program um, you can go to SourceForge and here's the download the URL is up there SourceForge Projects uh, Spin Simulator and you'll see it uh, there's a uh, project samples right there you can download the contents of it and again it works both on a PC and a Mac I typically do mine on a Mac because I'm usually at home that's my laptop at home at, at work I have a PC on the desk so I use both uh, so a lot of times I'll use both and it works identically on both of them it um, uh, doesn't matter okay let me bring the uh, the uh, simulator over here and show you that and right here it is um, there's actually QT spin right here and I've got it up and running and you'll see the file there's the reinitialize and load there's the simulator where you can say run and continue stop or single step there's the registers you can say display in hex binary I usually have it in hex um, over here is the window. Now on the window you typically want integer registers, floating point registers, text segment, data segment, and console all appearing. One of the problems you'll run into is when you're running um, you may not see the output and what you want to do is you want to come over here to the window and drop down and make sure console is turned on because uh, if you hide that it doesn't, uh, doesn't work. Last thing I want to tell you before we uh, close this uh, this presentation is um, QT spin is comprised of these these windows right here that you can move out and and change and and move aside and if that ever gets screwed up you can go back and say with restore defaults and it'll put them back together uh, it's happened to me a couple times so um, uh, just just to note this is this is the best or uh, configuration of this environment that you want all right. Well, now, before you um, go any further, review this slides a couple times if you need to. Download the uh, simulator, put it on your machine, and then uh, go to the next video that um, kind of shows you your first MIPS assembly program. On to the next video.